first, a look at some of their early influences. My mother was quite a little dresser, still is. Um, and I must have, because I've always loved clothes. And my mother really taught me everything that I know about fashion. I just took it to a kind of another level. But um, I would guess it would have probably been uh, something very tailored and kind of severe and very chic I probably put on. Because my mother dressed, even when I was little, uh, different than other mothers. You know, in those days, um, mothers wore little flowered little shirts and little, little blouses, and my mother didn't do that. My mother wore very tailored things. And my mother also knit. She had her own knit shop for many wow. years. And so she used to knit a dress for her and then knit me a matching one. I was a bit curious on who may have encouraged or inspired these women to go after their dreams. And here's what they had to say. It was all quite by accident. I, I was modeling for money and doing pretty well and got um, asked to be seen at 20th Century Fox Studios back then when they had the new talent department. Mm -hmm. And um, I was asked to go into the talent department and I had no interest in it at all. And probably that's why they wanted me because it was that totally old thing about I was totally indifferent. And I stalled and I went, well, I don't know, and they kept raising the money. So I, I went on a contract and got more money than anybody else. <laughs> And um, and that sort of began the acting, and it was all, I never took any of it seriously. Very afraid. I just mm -hmm. scared to death. And they'd make us go out and do little, a little thing here on Peyton Place or this and that. And I, and I hated all of it. Mm -hmm. um, the very first job I ever did, I, I had to say, well, hello. And I went home and I practiced it 700 different ways. Because <laughs> believe it or not, there's a lot of ways to say that. You can, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then when the, it was time to shoot it the next day, and it was like, you know, all right, five, four, three, two, one. I went, well, hello. I, I was so terrified of it. And it took me years to not be in that spot mm -hmm. of terror. I hated acting. Hated it. And everyone said, well, you're so sophisticated looking, because I was always a dresser. Uh, just be sophisticated. And I didn't know what the hell that meant. What does that mean, be sophisticated? So I went, I married a man who was a, a, an actor slash drama coach, and he was very good, Sal Dano the name that I, that I still use. And um, I did a scene after scene after scene, but every time I went to do a job, I would just shake in my boots. I had no sense of who I was or what I was. And again, I talk about Frankie, because Frankie has been an enormous influence in my life in many ways. I, half the time, I want to kill him, but he's an enormous influence. Uh, he's an, he's an award-winning art director mm -hmm. and a creative type, one of those. Mm -hmm. And he used to say to me, just be you. Do mm -hmm. you. More people like you than any character you're ever going to play. Right, and I think sometimes and when you're close yeah. to yourself, they don't even see who they you are. They don't even see who you are. Because I've had that experience right. they on just stage. saw me as this very sophisticated lady, you yeah. know, and, but I had no way of, what does that mean? That, you know, I, I don't know how to connect to that. Mm -hmm. So little by little, when I moved here to New York mm -hmm. to be with Frank and get married, is when I went on my first soap, which was One Life to Live. Mm -hmm. And every day, Frank would say, did you do you? And then he'd watch. He'd say, you're not doing you. And little by little, little, I got braver. And I would try things. And when I would try it, I'd get a response. And it's like a kid, you know, mm -hmm. when you do a dirty joke, or a kid says a dirty word, and, and you all laugh Everybody's as adults, kidding. and you hate yourself, but you laughed, and now he says it 400 times a day. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. So I got braver and braver, until finally I reached a point where I became truly fearless. Now I'm sort of fearless. I jump right off and, you know, some days it works, some days I crash. But at least I, you but know, you I'll go try for stuff. It. I go for stuff. Which is great. Yeah. But that's really Frank who did that.